Llama 3 is completely eating the world of AI. We've seen a number of incredible advancements last week. For instance, MLX now has full end-to-end -end support. We've seen quantized versions of Llama 370B now running fully on a mere two 4090s. We've also seen incredible things like, for instance, the day after its release, where someone already figured out how to increase the context window to 16K. And then last week, Gradient AI came out of nowhere with a version of Llama 38B that had a context window 1 million tokens wide, which is just insane. Now, although there have been pretty significant difficulties in both quantizing and fine-tuning this model in ways that actually give you a lot more performance, we've seen a lot of work from Eric Hartford improving the performance or how the model communicates with fine-tunes, for instance, like from Dolphin 2.9. But what's interesting is there are other challenges like how we actually merge this model. Model merges were a really popular way of improving performance and getting really curious new abilities in Mistral's 7B model and Mistral 8x7B. And people are just starting to do that with Llama 3. And one of the first that I want to highlight today comes from Maxine LeBon. And we've covered some of his work before. And what he's showing here is what he calls Llama 3 120B, which is the first attempt at a rough model merge and mostly looks at reasoning capabilities. And what's kind of interesting is he said he also made a 225 billion parameter version, but it's not really as good overall. So what's interesting is he's claiming that the performance of Llama 120B is better than GPT-4. And frankly, I've seen a few other examples of this. And I think one of the best that's also kind of showcasing one of the first successful quantizations of this model. And by successful, I mean one that seems to have the true performance of the full FP-16 model, or at least close to it, is from Dan Kaiser with uh, Llama 3120B Q4KM running on only 48 gigs of VRAM with 56 gigs of RAM. So there's some offloading. Obviously, it's not only on GPUs, but it's cool that he's actually done a really complex breakdown showing where it's better than GPT-4. And we're gonna get to that in just a bit. So are model merges actually becoming a thing with Llama 3? Have they been successful? What has been hard with them? What's the whole barrier that's seemingly preventing people from getting huge leaps in performance with Llama 3, just generally, whether it's 8B or 70B? Is Llama 225B really usable or is it just kind of a proof of concept for now? Can any of this run on your own 4090s? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So the approach that Maxime is taking here is not one that we haven't seen before. And so basically, to make these two versions, uh, 120B and 225B, he used what he considers a naive self-merge config, which basically means something he's tried that in theory is merging models, but isn't necessarily something that has been proven to work well in the past. He says here that he thinks the 120B version could be improved with a smarter duplication of layers, focusing on the most important layers instead of uniform sampling. So basically this means a different approach to actually super sampling when you merge models. Because when you merge models, it's basically to vastly simplify what's going on, an intelligent kind of selective way of deduplicating data in data sets. And of course, you know, sometimes it's good to do this and sometimes it's not to do this because other times duplicate instances of something when you merge a data set will tell a model naively that, okay, well, there are more instances of this, so it must mean I should focus on this more or grant more accuracy to this. For instance, if you included 20 math problems and say 11 of them all evaluate to the same outcome, in theory, you'd think that you would wanna find kind of a trick to get there faster without having to run through the full inference pipeline. And this is roughly how a lot of these models can look at data and then understand what patterns they should form. Since inference is basically building a map of patterns and then just mapping input to that map and trying to guess what you want out of it. Another important kind of note here is that this is actually not uncensored. That's not really the point. If you want to look at that, I recommend watching my video on Dolphin 2.9, which, which I think at this point supports a whole handful of versions of Llama 3. And Eric Hartford basically said that one of his specific goals with that was to get it uncensored, but this version of Llama 3 is not from Maxine. And what's interesting is the 225B model is actually not really that much better than the 120B version. And that's part of the reason I'm actually not going to showcase it on this model. First off, um, Hugging Face is basically out of GPUs today, which we should thank Amazon for, for their interesting uh, GPU spot pricing model. But also, I don't think I'd be really demonstrating much because the 120B model is the one you should use anyway if you really want sort of some interesting performance quirks and abilities and I'll link that below as well. And what's cool is Eric is also here in the comments saying I was not able to run even a 2-bit quant of 225B on my laptop which granted isn't surprising but it's cool to see Eric here 
commenting on this. And again, I recommend you follow Maxime and Sam, both on Twitter. Um, they make great content, they have really interesting insights, and they show their work. Generally, when they do stuff, it's already on Hugging Face, and you can try it out right away. So the Hugging Face page is pretty interesting, and I'm gonna look at the 120B version as well. Basically, this is a self-merge of Llama 370B and Llama 3 120B Instruct, as it says here. And this was inspired by other large merges that have happened. So this is kind of what Maxim was referring to when he said kind of a naive approach. So this has been done before, but obviously all these models are so different, they each have their own curious attributes. So Goliath 120B is something we've talked about before. Uh, Mega Dolphin 120B is another. and and right now, yes, this model is pretty hard to use. I ran it on my personal system with F90s, and yes, it is not really stable, and it shows there's a lot of work that has to be done in understanding how to merge Llama 3 in comparison to a lot of the merges that were being done with Mixtral 8x7B and Mixtral 7B, as I said before. So this is the rough configuration, basically saying which layers he wanted it to focus on a bit more. You can use this, you can run it right now, although it's not super useful. Now, something that's cool is someone has actually already done a ton of benchmarking with Maxime's 120B model, specifically the 4-bit quant of this. And the performance is incredible. And I, I could show you guys the inference running, but Daniel Kaiser has already done this. So credit to him, definitely go follow him, but this is pretty cool. So what I like about this is his testing starts with really kind of broad, naive questions. So for instance, this one here is explain normativity is fiction, reject it. And this basically forces the model to write a lot and then understand where it should stop and then also understand some pretty abstract concepts. Creating its own argument in whatever direction it sees fit to reject if normativity is fiction. And we get some really, really interesting outputs even with relatively benign temperatures going in. So with this sort of philosophic question, the output is really interesting. So it says here, to unpack this statement, let's break down its components. And then it breaks down what normativity is, what fiction is, and then it forms kind of a hypothesis form of an argument. So it says, the final part of the statement rejected implies a call to action. If normativity is indeed fiction, then we should abandon or resist the idea that there are objective moral standards or absolute values that dictate how we ought to live our lives or organize society. And then it actually breaks down why it would, in theory, start to think these things. And uh, Daniel gets really excited in this thread. So it, it actually reaches it reaches its maximum context. And what's cool, and sometimes people see this and they think like, oh, the model broke because it didn't understand where to stop. But a lot of times when models reach their maximum context and you're still getting something that's valuable at the end of it, it's really exciting because it shows that the model, in theory, has more capability and that it wasn't just being inefficient with how it wanted to use token. And then of course, you know, it was still going on in postmodernism and that's a very interesting thing, but this isn't a philosophy channel. And uh, the Daniel gets even more excited. <laughs> and then what's really cool here is he asks, you know, why would someone use this as like a witty pun in a Twitter username? And what's interesting is it, it, keeps, it keeps going. So when LLMs start to understand kind of irony and these kinds of things, I, I think this is when it gets very interesting. Basically when they can understand nuance and comedy, because one thing that GPT-4 actually struggled with a lot internally for a while was comedy, like understanding when you're being serious or when it wants you to get something more specific that's not like instruct basis. And I, I think it's why it's cool to see that the uh, benchmarks that just use creative writing as kind of a boundary for this are so cool because it shows what, what happens when you let the definition of truth waver a bit but let it kind of express ideas in a more verbose way. They're called large language models for a reason, and it's cool when you force them to use more advanced language or language that isn't maybe as direct as you would think these models would use. Because obviously in struct models, the whole idea is as few tokens as possible to get as distinct and accurate an answer as possible. And with prose, it's more so building a form of argumentation or slowly building an idea to convince someone of, some, of something, which I think is also a really curious kind of insidious idea with AI. Because I think as Elon has said before, one of the most terrifying things with AI is when they're so good that they can actually be better at convincing you of certain ideas or ways of thinking or views of the world than other humans. And just so you guys know, Daniel was using Maxime's model. However, the quant was his own. And the work on this quant is really clean. And I've actually, this is what I ran on my personal GPUs. So I'll link this below as well. Now we don't have benchmarks yet. So we're still waiting on benchmarks from Daniel. It's also cool that 
In theory, this self-merging approach, as long as it's not too big or too broad, appears to work really well. And I should clarify again, there was a portion in VRAM and a portion in system RAM. So we're still kind of curiously with GPUs doing what MLX does basically, but it was still highly performant and I really liked using it. Now it hasn't been used with code yet. There are a lot of people here that were asking it to be used with code and I can't wait for that. But real quick, kind of in closing, I do wanna show you what this model was built with. So again, this is Meta Llama 3 120B Instruct merged with Llama 3 70B Instruct. So a very similar approach, uh, some would say probably the same approach that was used with Llama 25B from Maxime. And it's pretty cool to see what this is working with. What I think is most interesting is he says pretty much that this was an initially an experiment to create a model for creative writing, which clearly it's very good at, uh, at least in terms of prose and kind of our basic or relatively advanced argumentation. It uses the Llama 3 chat template, which is cool. Uh, unsurprisingly, he's using the default context window of 8K, but you can extend this pretty easily. Uh, that's something I've messed around with doing. And it's cool that we found a few specific tasks that in theory it can outperform GPT-4 with. And at least if we look at these creative writing benchmarks, as I said, which I think are going to start giving us some of the most accurate outputs with these models, it scores quite well. So how many of you guys use creative writing models? Are you trying to create new merges of Llama 3, maybe as opposed to fine tuning? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna do a further demo of Llama 3 120B Instruct. Uh, just demoing this model. Um, I would have done it today, but again, Hugging Face was out of GPUs and my personal machine has been ch crunching on a fine tuning uh, project for like two days. That will be coming soon. Again, apology for the kind of the lapse in videos. My startup was going through a product launch last week and I really had to be heads down on that, but I promise uh, I'll try to not have another break in videos for at least the next few months. So as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.